Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Angelo, and uh, I'm here to talk about a little bit about uh, fighting malware with deep learning. So I will show you how you can use deep learning to build a classifier, uh, binary classifier. And uh, I'd like to th thank you for coming and thank thank you Defcon AI Village. This is my first Defcon, so I'm a, a little bit. Uh, lost here but uh it's been pretty being uh being uh very amazing here so and i'd like to thank thanks my company taught us to support me to come here also all right um so who am i uh i work as an ethical hacker at totus the lar largest software company in latin america we build uh, erp and uh, I'm a part-time data scientist, basically, you know, self-made. And then uh, I'm a part-part-time PhD student. I hope my supervisor uh, won't listen to that. And uh, I'm interested in deep learning data science for um, malware detection and classification. Okay, so uh, first I want to share uh, some some experience I had. Okay, so I, I was not a researcher, you know. I, I got a degree in, in mathematics, but I was not a researcher. So I went to, uh, I started working with computers, programming, and so on. So actually, you're not researching. But then I wanted to to make some research, and I uh, I wanted to get into this uh, machine learn, learning, deep learning, AI thing. And uh, I didn't know, didn't know how. So I started studying machine learning, this online resources and books, deep learning and malware analysis. Uh, I've already knew of something about malware analysis, but I kind of uh, learned more. Okay. And then uh, since you want to make research, you need to start studying the state of the art papers. You know, to see what's going on, what, what's in the edge. So, okay. And then I started to read these papers. And, and I got stuck when I tried to reproduce them. Because they, they are very theoretical, you know. And uh, sometimes, sometimes you don't have enough information to reproduce them. So this is a very big problem in uh, machine learning papers and um for our analysis in particular, because the guys, they don't want to tell you the, their hyperparameters. They don't share data. So it's quite hard to reproduce the papers. But also, sometimes because you just don't know the basics. You haven't been through uh, the basics. You didn't code something simpler to see it work working. So you need to, to do that. Um, OK. so. Here, 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 what happens is because we actually, what he's saying here, here is that there is a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. What, what does that mean in this context? It means that I wanted to do research, but I haven't done anything yet. I want to jump, you know, make a big, uh, take a big step. So that's, that's quite hard to do. So you need to step back. Right and fill that gap, and how you do that? Basically, you want to build. Uh, that's very important for machine learning, in uh, not only in our research but uh, any kind of research. You need to build your baseline, your own baseline models from the scratch, and from the scratch, I mean that you don't need to implement backpropagation yourself. You don't need. You can, but you don't need. You can use a high-level framework, deep learning framework, to do that for you. Um, so that will be your starting point for doing research. And the second thing is that you want to build simple and working models um, using the techniques you want to master and research. Because you need, you need, you need to uh, learn then uh, very well if you want to contribute with something new. And the third point is, uh, this is kind of strange, but uh, you need 
to not contribute first to be able to contribute later. So first, you need to learn the basics. Then, you know, you are not contributing. You are contributing with yourself. And then you can uh, then try to contribute with the scientific community or, or whatever. Uh, so always be humble. You don't know anything. You don't know everything. Okay, so we are data scientists, right? Right. So we need, uh, in, in our case, we need malware, a lot of malware, mean, meaning we need instances, we need data to feed our models. Um, this, is, that's, this, this one is my favorite repository. Uh, it's called Virus Share. So there you can find, uh, I checked yesterday, almost 34 uh, million uh, instances of malware to download. So you can download huge files, six gigabytes each, with 60,000 instances there, and you can play with them. Uh, okay, and then one, one good thing is that they are already uh, labeled using uh, virus total. So as you can see, uh, I told you, there are several layers. And the uh, first layers are low level features and the deeper layers, layers high level features. What, are, what we are interested in is uh, getting this uh, data from this data sets I will show you and then try to figure out if they are, uh, if that, if they are malicious or not, because we're trying to detect malware. And then uh, we have also the recurrent neural networks that they are good for sequential uh, modeling. So if you get sequential data varying time or space, something like that, you can use recurrent neural networks for that. They are good for dynamic uh, analysis. So okay, so we need to build our machine learning, deep learning data science pipeline. This is uh, actual uh, real uh, information that I, I took about one month to download Mauer and Goodware, and then uh, I set up a, an environment hypervisor with nine virtual machines running for four months around the clock to run this Mauer and get the dynamic information. And then we need to do the basics for, from data science, meaning we need to pre-process our data, we need to clean the data, uh, we need to make uh, some feature engineering, get the best features for, for our problem. In this, in this case, it's a, the feature engineering, engineering was minimal. Okay, I haven't done almost any. Okay, and then um, we are ready to play with the models. So you use a high level framework and you can start building the models. Okay, so all right. Um, so I have, I have here three models to show you. I will share this code, the Jupyter Notebooks, and I will share the data set, the data sets, because there are several data sets. Um, so don't worry if you can't uh, get something, because I will need to be very quick. Uh, now I just need some help here, because uh, I will need to throw the code there, and I can't see the code here, you know, because my, my screen is extended. Someone help me there from AI Village, please. Yes, but then I can't see then the code from here, you know, when I drag. Please. Uh, so what I need is uh, I open here the code and I want to project there, but the, the, the screen is extended. That's why I. So I won't have time to explain step by step the code, but basically what I'm showing here is an example 
of each of those models I showed before. You know, this one is a multi-layer perception for static uh, analysis data. So basically, um, what we do first is to import all the libraries, necessary libraries, for Python libraries. Uh, they're amazing. So here's our, our data set. Uh, I get in, I'm getting data from the PE sections. So PE sections basically uh, describes the sections in the executable file. Okay, so one, one information here that's very important is this entropy. Usually when the entropy is high, uh, it means that either the code is encrypted or packed. So malware, usually malware authors, they usually like packing the content of the file to avoid antivirus detection. But that's not enough, okay? This can be very high, but it's not a malware. So can't rely only on one uh, feature. So, okay, and uh, there, is a, there is a column here saying it's a malware or not. Okay, so this is how our data looks like, and this is tabular data, it's in a table. Um, here I do some correlation analysis, you know, to figure out correlation among the features. You see that some features are very high, highly correlated, so we can drop them out. You don't need to duplicate data. And then what I'm doing here is uh, opening another data set that is called uh, imports, PE imports. PE imports basically, you know, when you create a program, you need to import functions from DLLs and so on. Uh, and maybe we can find, we can, the machine learning, deep learning algorithm can spot some patterns that are used for malware, uh, in malwares. So what we're doing here uh, is, uh, in, this data set is uh, the most 1,000 important in, imported functions in reverse order. So for example, this malware imported this get proc address function and this get proc address function is the most important, most imported function. Okay, so this is uh, what what it means. So you see that there are a lot of features here, and they are categorical. Categorical features are uh, a little bit ha harder to deal with because you can't just play with them. You are not playing with numbers. Okay, you are playing with cat categories. All right. So and in the end, we have said some hour or not, and this data set has uh, 47,000 uh, entries. Okay, so we remove duplicates, and then we, mer we merge the files, and then now we have the data set ready. Okay, I'll jump a little bit here. We convert these data sets, pandas, da pandas are data frames to NumPy arrays to feed the models. And then uh, there is another problem here. We need to check the imbalance. And this, uh, this is high imbalanced. See, 24 to one. So we have 24 is malware instances for each goodware instances. So that's a problem, okay? Um, then we need to make the train test split uh, stratified. So meaning that after performing this split, we need to keep the proportions, okay? And basically here I am standardizing the code. I can, I, I will only standardize the code that is numeric, see? I'm not touching the um, categorical data. Okay, so let's jump to the model. Ah, here, there is something interesting. Uh, we need to deal with imbalance. So the data set is imbalanced. So we can try to use some algorithm to over, over, to over, over sample, over sampling technique. So for example, this moat won't work here because it can't deal with categorical features. And there is a variation called smote uh, nominal and continuous that was taking just too much time to run. So I gave up for now. And then we can, can use a random oversampler. But random oversampler is bad because it just uh, duplicates data. But in our case, helped. So after running that, you see, we can see here that now the data set is balanced. 
And then I will perform some vis visualization using TSNE. TSNE is a pretty awesome algorithm for visualizing high dimensional data. Uh, basically, it projects high dimensional data onto the plane or to space, to space. So you can have an idea how the data is, uh, is in, in that high dimensional space. And then you can also have an idea about the decision boundaries your model will need to learn. And this, you see, this is complicated, this one. Red is malware and green is a good word. We need to separate them out. Uh, so deep learning. So here's a model, deep learning model. Uh, for multi-layer multi perceptron. As you can see, the model is quite simple. This is not research. This is, this is just uh, that homework, you know? I, I, I said in the beginning that I need to understand how to build a simple model in order to try to build something more complex or new. So this is a, just a, a model with two dense layers. And then after that, we create the model, get the... Here, the summary, one, 146,000 uh, six, parameters. It's a, not really too much, right? Uh, here's the model. We can get this model, the architecture of the model, just uh, with one command. And uh, now here, there is an algorithm that I, I, I would like to explain deep, deep, more, more deep, but I can't because uh, I don't have time, but this is a model selection. Basically, I'm making an automation of the model selection here. I'm getting those hyperparameters and testing each one of them, combinations, you know, and uh, performing a three-fold uh, three cross-validation to see which combination is better. And after that, we train the model for some, for some time. This case was didn't take too much, okay? I trained at home, okay? I have a NVIDIA RT RTX 2080 uh, Ti. So 4,300 CUDA cores. It's a decent uh, card. So 10,000 seconds, half, roughly three hours. And here, it's important to evaluate the model using the test set. And Okay, we have here the results from the model selection. So this is the best combination, the dropout rate 0 0.6. The first model architecture, the first model architecture here is a dropout first and then batch normalization. There is a holy war about that, you know, people, no, you should use batch norm first and then drop out or vice versa and uh, neither of them or both in any order but actually it depends on, on the nature of your, of your data. So that's why you need to test it. Uh, and the lowest number of neurons, one. So after that, we perform an evaluation. And with the evaluation, we have a, a thing called confusion matrix to show the true negatives, false positives, false negatives, and true positives. Uh, first, what we do is to, to create a benchmark. A benchmark. So suppose that you have a model that predicts that every, every, every example is a malware. So what happens? These are the numbers you get. And you see, since the data set is imbalanced, you get pretty good numbers here for accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score. This is misleading. So you need to use a better metric for unbalanced data set. And the best metric, as far as I know, is a balanced accuracy. And balanced accuracy is showing here that basically you have chosen, a, a, you have a predicted every, every example as a malware. So it's very bad. This is the worst case scenario. And then when we apply uh, on the test set, our model, we get this result. So it's much better. So as you can see, if you are using a multi-layer perceptron that is a very simple deep neural network, we can already get very good results. Now you can imagine those very, very deep models with those uh, inception layers and so on. You can get much better. Okay, now the next example, I'll just show you the, the model. 
this is a uh, this is interesting because what I have done here is just to treat the binary data uh, like an image, as if it, it was an image. So take a look at that. This is what we get. So these are malware images. I get the binary and then I treat each byte like a grayscale and then scale it. So we get this information. And then basically, we feed it to a convolutional neural network because convolutional neural networks are specialists in dealing with images. So the same problem, imbalanced, and so on. And then visualization looks similar to what we have seen there. Pretty complicated decision boundary. And then deep learning. So this is our model, convolutional model. So as you can see, it's very, very simple. We have a convolutional layer and then we have uh, there is a, a, a there is a model selection here. It's about should we apply max pooling first and then batch normalization or batch normalization first and max pooling. This is also a whole holy a war. You know, nobody knows what's better. But what you can do is to perform model selection with cross validation, and then you see which is better for your kind of data. All right, and then. So basically we have a convolutional layer and then uh, max pooling and then another convolutional layer and then max pooling and then we flatten them out to feed to a fully connected layer for uh, classification or in our case, um, binary classification. Okay, so we train this for some time. Uh, I think it's still got some five minutes. Um, I want to show you how much time I needed to train. Uh, here. So f 15,000 seconds, five hours, four hours. Not too much, really. And the results, so cross validations and results. Uh, evaluation, okay. So the bank mark also pretty good. Accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score, because they don't deal very well with unbalanced data sets. Balanced accuracy is the worst possible. And then when we use to pre our, our model to predict using the test set, we get this. So also not good, but there are some, some um, explanations here. First, because uh, I think the main the main explanation here is because malware usually nowadays they are all packed so the content is encrypted or obfuscate, obfuscated so what you are seeing here is mostly a ra random noise so you can't expect the algorithm to do uh, much better but still it's a pretty good result uh, you could just for example add and step in your pre-processing um, pipeline to unpack this. But this is quite complicated because each malware uses a different technique, different key. Sometimes the key, he gets the key online and so on. So it's complicated. And then finally, uh, dynamic analysis. Dynamic analysis, I'll show you the a network called long short term memory. It's quite pretty good for dealing with sequential data. And all this software you see for speech recognition, automatic translation, use this kind of network. So here I'm getting the sequence of calls, of API calls. See, T0, T1, T2, T these are the calls the malware uh, uh, does to the Windows API. So I got just 1,024. And then basically I do the job here of cleaning and then balancing the data set. And take a look at this, even more simpler network. There is a version. If you are running TensorFlow and Keras, you can use the, the CUDA version to run that runs much faster than the LSTM version. And then basically, um, 
this takes much more time to train, okay? Your GPU will be burning there for some hours, really burning, 90%, 100% usage for, some, for several hours. And in this case, it took about 29,000 uh, seconds, 10, uh, nine hours, okay? And the results here of the model selection, and basically you get our confusion matrix and then get the results here. You see, we got 91% balanced accuracy. This is a, a little bit impressive because our data set is small, you know, our, uh, the, and the number of features, I don't know if you have noticed there, but uh, the data set has 1,024 features and we used only, I think, 300 because my computer didn't have enough memory because we need to make a conversion of these features, features from categorical to one hot encoders, encoding, sorry, before feeding the model. But my computer didn't have enough uh, memory for that. So, all right. Um, now we can have an idea how you can use, uh, apply deep learning for malware detection and classification. Uh, that was the idea of this uh, talk. So let me just close here. Can you see there, the slides? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay, uh, and my research basically is about malware behavior, and I'm researching specialized uh, data augmentation methods because the current ones, they just don't work very well with this kind of data. And also, I uh, specialized representation learning techniques for malware detection and classification, and uh, this uh, will lead to improvements in detection and classification of zero days and polymorphic, polymorphic and metamor metamorphic malware. And that's it. Thank you very much for attending and uh, 